What if the Greek play Antigone had taken place in modern-day Pond Bank? Would the characters have been any different? Would the ending have been so tragic? Would the... Well, I guess we're going to find out. dollar bills and it kills and it thrills like the horns on my Silverado grill and I buy the bar a double round the crown and everybody's getting down in this town ain't never gonna be the same Cause Annabelle's two brothers Earl and Pappy accidentally shot each other in a freak hunting accident The town sheriff, Cletus, decided that Earl, who was hunting squirrels, should be buried and given a nice funeral. But Pappy had been hunting deer out of season, so Cletus decreed that his body should be left to rot. Annabelle believed that Pappy should be buried and tries to recruit the help of her sister Ida, but Ida refused to help. So Annabelle went one night and covered the body with dirt. Cletus went into an awful rage. What does this mean? Isn't that the dairy princess Annabelle? Why should she be taken? Well, my TV's not working! Bring me beer! Woman! Here's the one who did it. We caught her in the very act of burying him. Ain't you, Annabelle? You with your head hanging? Do you confess this thing? I do. I deny nothing. You may go. Tell me, tell me briefly. Have you heard my proclamation touching this matter? It was public. Could I help hearing it? And yet you dared defy the law? I dared. It was not God's proclamation. The final justice that rules the world below makes no such laws. You <coughs> smile at me. Ah, oh, Cletus, think me a fool if you like, but it may well be that a fool convicts me of folly. Stop. Like father, like daughter, both deaf to reason. She has never learned to yield. She has much to learn. The inflexible heart breaks first, the toughest iron cracks first, and the wildest horses bend their necks at the pull of the smallest curve. Pride? In a slave? This girl is guilty of double insolence, breaking the given laws of it. Who is the man here, she or I? If this crime goes unpunished, sister's child, or more than, more than sister's child, or closer yet in blood, she and her sister with bitter death for this. Go, some of you. Arrest Ida. I accuse her equally. Bring her. You will find her sniffling in her house there. Her mind is a traitor. Crimes crept in the dark cry for light, and the guardian brain shudders. But how much worse than this is brazen boasting of this is brazen boasting of bar-faced anarchy. Cletus, what more do you want than my death? Nothing. This gives me everything. Then I beg you, kill me. This talking is a great weariness. Your words are distasteful to me, and I am sure that mine seems so to you. And yet they should not seem so. I should have praise and honor for what I have done. All these men here would praise me, were not their lips frozen shut with fear of you. Ah, the good fortune of sheriffs. Licensed to say and do whatever they please. You are alone here in that opinion. No, they are with me, but they keep their tongues in leash. Maybe, but you are guilty, and they are not. There is no guilt in reverence for the dead. But, Earl, was he not your brother, too? My brother, too. And you insult his memory? The dead would not... And you insult his memory? The dead man would not say that I insulted. He would, for your honor a traitor as much as him. His own brother, traitor or not, and equal in blood. He made war on this country. Earl defended it. Nevertheless, there are honors due all the dead. But not the same for the wicked. 
As for the just. Oh, Cletus, Cletus, which of us can say what the gods hold wicked? An enemy is an enemy, even dead. It is my nature to join in love, not hate. Go, join them. If you must have your love, find it in hell. But see, Ida comes. Those tears are sisterly. The cloud that shadows her eyes rains down gentle sorrow. You too, Ida? Snake my ordered house, sucking my blood stealthily? And all the time, I never knew that these two sisters were aiming at my throat. Ida, do you confess you share in this crime or Answer not? Answer me! Answer me! Yes, she will let me say so. I am guilty. No, Ida. You have no right to say so. You will not help me, and I will not have you help me. But now I know what you meant, and I am here to join you. To take my share of punishment. The dead and the gods who rule the dead know whose act this was. Words are not friends. Do you refuse me, Annabelle? I want to die with you. I too have a duty that I must discharge you. You shall not lessen my death by sharing it. What do I care for life when you are dead? Ask Cletus. You're always hanging on his opinions. You are laughing at me. It's a joyless laughter, Ida. But can I do nothing? Yes. Save yourself. I shall not envy you. There are those who will praise you. I shall have honor too. But we are equally guilty. No more, Ida. You are alive, but I belong to death. Gentlemen, I beg you, observe these girls. One has just now lost her mind. The other, it seems, never had a mind at all. Grief teaches the steadiest minds to waver, Sheriff. Yours certainly did, when you assailed guilt with the guilty. But how could I go on living without her? You are. She is already dead. But your, but your own son's ride. There are places enough for him to push his plow. I want no wicked woman for my sons. Oh, dearest Henry, how your father wrongs you. <laughs> I've had enough of your childish talks. Do you really intend to steal this girl from your son? No. Death will do that for me. Then she must die? You dazzle me. But enough of this talk. You, there. Take them away and guard them well, for they are but women, and even brave men rule when they see death coming. And take it to heart. The time is not far off when you shall pay back corpse for corpse, flesh for your own flesh. You have thrust the child of this world into living night. You have kept from the gods below the child that is theirs. The one in a grave before her death, the other dead, denied by the grave. This is your crime, and the furies and the dark gods of hell are swift with terrible punishment for you. Do you want to buy me now, Cletus? Not many days, and your house will be full of men and women weeping, and curses will be hurled at you from city, from far cities grieving for sons unburied, left to rot before the walls of Palm Bank. These are my arrows, Cletus. They are all for you. But come, child. Lead me home. Let him waste his fine anger upon younger men. Maybe he will learn at last to control a wiser tongue in a better head. Sheriff, but his words remain to plague us. I'm old too, 
but I cannot remember that he was ever false. That is true. It troubles me. Oh, this is hard to give in. But it is worse to risk everything for stubborn pride. Cletus, take my advice. Go quickly. Free and go quickly. Free Annabelle from her vault and build a tomb for the body of Pappy. You would have me do this? Yes, Cletus, and it must be done at once. The gods move swiftly to cancel the folly of stubborn men. It is hard to deny the heart, but I will do it. I will not fight with destiny. You must go yourself. You cannot leave it to the others. I will go. Bring axes, servants. Come with me to the tomb. I buried her. I will set her free. Oh, quickly. My mind misgives the laws of the gods are mighty, and the man must serve them to the last of his day. Will Cletus reach Annabelle in time, or will tragedy strike the town of Pond Bank? Find out on April 1st at the premiere of Annabelle and Cletus, the prize of two records. Transcends the wrath of Zeus. Sleep cannot lull him, nor the effortless long months of the timeless gods. But he is young forever, and his house is the shining day of high Olympus. And that end shall be, and all the past is his. No pride on earth is free of the curse of heaven. Oh, one, two, three, four. The same things of men, they bring them ghosts of joy. But as they close, the waking embers burn for them. For they walk with the stars that smart men walk. But the This is the Palm Bay Community Center. Where is the community? If you want um, a really, really nasty looking shirt, I have lots of them up in my bedroom. I have a nasty on my bed. one too. Like how nasty? Like bad. Like just go look at them. I have this one if you want a nasty one. <laughs> no, if you want nasty, I should have brought my dad's pink flag shirt. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's true. Yeah. You can get, yeah. I'm sorry. Rachel, I'm you can even change in my room. I've had a this is why they're all doing this project, just so they can get free pizza. But will they share any? Will they, will they share any with the poor camera crew? I doubt it. Oh, that's so nice. That was not very nice, Sam Jones. Sorry. This is a great night. Oh, it's so much fun. What is the whole pizza here? Is there are you serious? <laughs>
ketchup and salted and pizza <laughs> all in one night. So <laughs> like one giant. Buffet bar. So he's like a pizza fry. <laughs> I'm a buffet all in one. Yes. I come over and. No. <laughs> oh god, that is so crazy. <laughs> I could feel the cheese clogging in my throat. <laughs> I felt my life pass before my eyes. Ooh, I saw the light coming toward me, and, I was like, and there were so many things you yes. wanted to say. Oh my god. I wanted to say, Rachel, you can marry me. <laughs> yes, Dad. <laughs> Guess who's on the wedding list? Or the guest list? Me! Mrs. Miller. She's right out there, number one. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to do this project. It's great. I'm having so much fun. It's Saturday night. It's like 9 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. 7.45. Oh, 7.45. And I, okay, I have my own homework to do, but instead I'm helping your students with theirs. But it's great. Okay. I love it. It's all great. News it is news across the nation on the scene at the supermarket. There seems to have been some disturbance here. Pardon me, sir. Did you see what happened? Yeah, I did. I was standing over by the tomatoes, and here he comes, running through the pole beans, through the fruits and vegetables, naked as a jaybird. And I hollered over to Ethel. I said, Don't look, Ethel. And it's too late. She'd already been in the scene. Here he comes. Boogie there, boogie there. There he goes. Boogie there, boogie there. Rachel Kern reporting for Pond Banks Television. I'm here with Nicole Helm from Mrs. Miller's fifth period AP English class. I have a few questions for her about the movie and about class. So, what do you think about AP English? No comment. So, what do you think about Mrs. Miller? No comment. I don't know how you want to take that one. Um, wouldn't it be funny if, like, we could have Sam coming out of the shower? <laughs> 